and welcome to Crazy Dave's Crew. This is another edition of Thursday Threads. I am having so much fun with my Facebook quilting groups with the block swaps, the jelly bean swaps, the, the, the birthday, everything. This has just been a blast and I am learning so much. And you would think something as simple as the fence rail. What is there to learn? You'd be surprised. I, le I learned something and I am really excited and I want to share it with you. So let's get started, shall we? So for this fence rail, I opened up a jelly roll. And it is, for this particular one, we're going to do four strips of two and a half inches. Okay. And I'm going to go light to dark. Now, you don't have to do it all. You, you can do them with coordinating fabrics. You can do them with uh, your scraps. It's a great way to use up scraps. But to begin with, you are just going to sew down your strips. But what I learned in researching how to do this for the quilt block swap was you don't want to sew the same direction for each one. So we're going to have three seams. So we need to sew this seam going one direction, this seam going that direction, and then this seam this direction. We want to alternate the direction of our sewing to keep the seams from bowing or having like a round look. See, that explained a lot to me why some of my strip quilting had a bit of a bow to it. Now I know. So this was really exciting. So this is going to help me improve. Just a, one little step to help me improve my sewing. So let's go press these down because it just kind of helps to press. And then we will sew these down and I'll show you what's next. Be right back. So I have pressed and I've gotten some of the wrinkles out, some of the creases, and I'm going to pin, big surprise if you've been watching me, and I'm going to do this in two different motions. I'm gonna take my lighter, I wanna make sure that my light one's on top of each set. So I'm gonna do two to begin with. Okay. So my light one is on top, my dark one's on the bottom, and then that should help me remember that way I can make my middle seam go the opposite direction. So I'm going to pin these and then I will meet you back at the sewing machine. All right, I have already sewn down my lighter of the four. So I've got my light on top and then there's my red so let's put that aside and I want to my two my two darker ones I am using a quarter inch piecing foot I really like it and I do recommend you getting them they're not terribly expensive you can get them on Amazon uh, I have a brother machine and this is a straight low shank uh, if you have any questions about what kind of foot your machine needs, you can always check it out on uh, Google. Put in the type of machine you've got, and it should be able to tell you. If it still doesn't, call, it, call your local sewing machine center. If you don't have one of these, though, you can always just put painter's tape or, ma or masking tape. Masking tape is going to stick worse, but uh, to be your guide. Just remember, whatever seam you use for the first one, you're going to use for the next ones. And my bobbin is almost empty, so we're going to go ahead and re refill that. When I'm in a mood, I will fill four or five bobbins at a time. So that when I'm in a sewing mood, I can just... Keep on rocking. Now the bobbin's full. That wasn't going to get us very far. 
So we're just going to line that up, stitch this down. And I want you all to see how I'm you can see where my needle is and how I'm just putting that right up next to the edge of my piecing foot. Remember it's not a race. experienced ladies can probably, or men, probably don't have to pin. I tend to slip though, so. And I'd rather take that extra few seconds to pin it and make sure my fabric stays put than to risk it slipping and having mistakes. And that is something I had to learn over the years. Take this over to our mat to pin to our other section of the two lighter colors. Come on. All right, so I have got my two lighter strips and then my two darker strips all sewn down, and I came this direction. So now what I think I want to do is I'm going to flip them. It seems on this side. I'm just going to kind of finger press them open. So I'm going light to dark. I'm going to flip my darker ones here. I'm going to open it up. And now this time, I'm going to sew this way so that I have got alternating seams. And that is just a new little trick that I have learned in researching for this. You know, I've seen on some of my Facebook groups, uh, new quilters. Oh, I just need inspiration. I don't know where to start. Can I give you all a suggestion? Start with looking at the events in, the, in one of these groups. See what the swaps are. You don't know what to sew. Do you, maybe you're not sure if you're quote, quote unquote, you know, good enough to submit for a swap block. So why don't you for that month play with the blocks that they're doing on for the for the swap. Learn how to do them, and then maybe you can participate the next month. And, and, and it doesn't matter what group you choose, you know. I think the number one thing for you to do is just to start sewing. The more you sew, the more you learn. The more you learn, the more you're going to sew. And the more ideas you have. The more confidence you get. And I'm just going to pinning this along.
by the way, when you are doing for a quilt swap, you really want to try to make sure that you are using the seams that they tell you in the instructions. Quarter inch seam. Make sure you've got your blocks the right size. But if you're just doing it for yourself, whatever seam allowance you use for the first line, use for the second. So I'm going to stitch this down. Then we're going to go press it, and I will be right back. I will show you what's next. Okay? So hang tight. All right, so we have sewn this down, and I have pressed it down, so we've got our lights to our dark. First thing I'm going to want to do is measure. It should measure eight and a half inches. And it does. So that's perfect. So now we're going to want a square. And we want our square to be the same height as it is wide. So the first thing I want to do is make sure I get my, my end up here nice and, and straight. on that line and we're just gonna whack off the edges okay so we said this was eight and a half inches eight and a half inches okay so So we are at eight and a half inches. Perfect. We're good. So I'm going to take my favorite guide ruler and I will have my husband who does the video, who, who, who edits and publishes the videos, I will tell him to please put a link in the description where you can get this ruler. It is a Fisker's ruler. It is six and a half inches wide and I think what 22, 24 inches long. So if I were to cut it like this, that would be six and a half inches, but I need eight and a half. So I'm going to come down two and I'm going to cut. And there's my fence rail block. going to cut up a few more of these. I need to make 20 of these. 16 to mail out to the administrator of my swap. Four for me to keep. And then I will receive some in the mail to put together. And then you can put them together. In any manner of ways that you want. You could put borders on them, do some sashing. Um, you can make it where it, it makes a design coming down. So this is nice, and I now have four, five of my necessary 20 blocks. And out of the jelly roll that I opened up, I had these as well. So I'm going to cut these up into eight and a half inch squares, and I'm going to finish up the rest of my jelly rolls. And Amazon has got some nice jelly rolls too, so if you want to check down at a link down in the description, we'll show you where you can get the ruler. Just a quick link for which one it is. There's some nice jelly rolls. Uh, you know, any feed that you might need. The number one rule, have fun. Enjoy yourself. And keep trying. Don't be afraid. I hope this has been helpful for you. 
I hope you've enjoyed it. I personally am having a marvelous time with my quilt swaps. I cannot begin to encourage y'all enough to join in, give it a try. Even if you don't send them in, at least give them a try. See what you can do. But have fun with it. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. Turn that red button to gray so that you can see what else we come up with. I am learning every day with these groups, learning every day little ways to tweak what I'm doing, and I, I am so pleased with how I am improving, and I hope you are too. Have a wonderful day, and I will see you next time on Thursday Threads. Thanks. Bye.